Hello, it is another Loose Heads podcast in association with Talking Rugby Union. I'm your host, Chris Hill, and come rain, sleet or shine, the co-founders of Loose Heads, Rob, Dave and Mark. Join me over Zoom once again, guys. How are we today? Very well, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Excellent. Thanks, mate. Excellent. And now we've been pretty transparent on the Loose Heads podcast in recent weeks that we have recorded it on a Friday morning, uh, Friday afternoon, sorry, usually, because it has been enjoyable to kind of end the week by recording a podcast and speaking to these global rugby stars and pundits. But we're actually recording this one on a Wednesday morning. There's a very, very good reason for that. We have not one but two guests on the podcast today. But first off, it's a, it's a big welcome back to Wasps and England's Brad Shields. Brad, how are we? It seems a long time ago since we did that podcast in April. <laughs> yeah, it seems like a long time ago. It's, um, to be fair, like now that it's lockdown sort of starting to ease, it feels like it's gone pretty quickly. But... Uh, as you say before, the sun has disappeared today, so I'm a bit worried to see what's going to happen over the next couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> and you've changed your look as well, brother. There's now no hair. Yeah, I've been through a roller coaster of looks or, <laughs> or facial hair and hair over the last sort of eight weeks, but I don't know. I've got to wait for it to grow back now. Well, um, Brad has um, managed to organise this podcast today. He's managed to bring a friend along with him to the Loose Heads podcast today. And we're delighted to say we welcome Hurricanes and New Zealand World Cup winner Dane Coles to the Loose Heads pod. Dane, thanks very much for joining us. How's things over in New Zealand? Uh, cheers, lads. Thanks for having me. Must be an early start for you boys. But uh, yeah, no, it's good. Uh, yeah, it's been good. We're back at training, mate. So, uh, boys are pumped. And uh, we kick off next week for Hurricanes against the Blues. So, yeah, we're, uh, yeah, we're pretty happy to be back running around and you know, doing what we love. Yeah, I mean, uh, talking rugby union day, and we managed to hop on to one of the press conferences you were involved with a couple of weeks ago, and it was really great to, to talk to you there. And you mentioned how much of a break it's been for you in your career to, to get back to playing again. So I guess you guys now, with probably a week and a half to go until the, the season resumes, you're all itching to get back playing again. Yeah, mate. It's, um, yeah, we were obviously thinking that there was going to be no rugby for the rest of the year. So, yeah, like I said, the boys are buzzing. It's, um, yeah, we were stepping on eggshells a little bit when we first came back into base, but, yeah, we're right into the mix of things now. We've got a bit of a, um, a game tomorrow in-house, so that'll be interesting. So, yeah, we're looking forward to it. Great stuff. Well, it's a pleasure to have you on the, on the podcast, Dane. And um, usually on, on the podcast, we talk straight away about loose heads and sort of mental health awareness. And in rugby, Dane, we see... Uh, quite a lot of um, teams and players now supporting and promoting awareness uh, for mental health. I mean, what's kind of your your stance on it? Is it, tr- you know, everyone should be okay to talk about the problems if they're struggling? Yeah, hugely, mate. Um, like, I've probably been through a little bit through injuries and stuff like that. So, you know, if you get your, your, your mental space right, it definitely has a, you know, a real effect on how you play rugby as well. And so, yeah, just about talking to each other and, and having a, you know, coffee if you're made and helping mates out, you know, being aware of, you, know, you can see guys in a bit of a rut. So, mate, it's a massive part of, um, you know, where we do things now and making sure people, you know, speak up and, and be the best person they can be and, and not doing it alone. And also, Dave, with um, rugby in New Zealand's been such a massive part of day-to-day society, do you guys maybe see yourselves as, as role models to maybe talk about mental health? Because I guess a lot of people do look up to, to like yourself and so many other the, the stars of the New Zealand rugby. Yeah, I think we have a responsibility, mate. Like, and there's a mess, there was probably a massive stigma like with rugby players that they were big, hard guys that never really showed their emotions. So I think over probably the last five years, we've kind of bro- broken those barriers. And um, I suppose it's inspiring the next generation, the next, you know, kids coming through, adults, whoever it may be, to you know, really, you know, make sure it's like a priority in their life and uh, they put time into it so they can, you know, feel the best way they can be and speak up and it's, it's all good to feel those emotions, to cry, to, you know, hug your maid and stuff like that. So, yeah, we definitely have a responsibility to make sure people feel welcome and, and, and at ease as well. And Brad, that must be really positive to hear, you know, one of your former teammates and close friends, Dane, talk talk about mental health awareness that way because we we focused a lot on the podcast about how well the premiership players do, how well you do in supporting mental health awareness. But to hear hear Dane say that must be another positive as well. Yeah, I, I guess for, for rugby, um, and I might have mentioned it last time I was on here, rugby is sort of like a universal language. So no matter where you are in the world or no matter what team you're playing for, whether it's a professional team, you know, a grassroots type of team, a club team, whatever it is, it, it, there's all parts of different struggles that go on. And 
and not one person has the same struggle with their own one just because you're on one side of the world or the other. Um, and I guess that's what rugby does. It brings a lot of people together and um, like what Dan said, as, as a responsibility or if we can shed as much light on this sort of stuff as, as we can and, um, and, and that make people, especially, you know, and younger people who, who aspire to be in our shoes, um, you know, that it's okay to go through a, a little bit of difference or a little bit of tough times to come out better on the other side. It makes you a stronger person and, and like Dan said, ultimately to perform better on the rugby field, which, um, which everyone wants and, and how you move forward. And Rob, Brad and Dane both talk about kind of, you know, aspiring the next generation there. And we, we've done a lot with team mental health. And obviously you guys have done a lot with team mental health about saying mental health affects everyone. It doesn't matter how old you are. So it must be great to hear Brad and Dane talk about, you know, the younger generation as well as every, everyone in society. Yeah, we, we started this whole thing because, you know, rugby is, for, for us, is a labour of love. Um, it's, it's our passion. Um, and it's something that we get very excited about and we talk about every day anyway. So to use this passion and an everyday of life to be good Samaritans um, and really spread the message uh, around mental, uh, mental health um, and talk about your feelings. Um, mental health does not discriminate. Um, it, it can affect us all and it will affect us at some point in our lives. Um, but if you look at the, the suicide rates in, in the UK and, and New Zealand, um, uh, you know, male, male suicide uh, suicide rates alone and um, they're horrific so we're using rugby as um as a passion as, as a way to tackle the stigma and Mark, a number of podcasts we've talked about you you've used the quote that the new zealand new zealand has invented rugby so when when dane kind of speaks so passionately about you know mental health it must be great when you know he's probably one of you know the figureheads or one of the figureheads for the all blacks in, in the last few years so you know that must be really great to hear one of the stars talk. So oh, about absolutely, you. absolutely. Having having uh, having Dane and Brad talk about their feelings quite openly gives everybody the legit legitimacy to do it themselves. So uh, yeah, it's a it's a huge honour for us to get people like like these guys on, and they did invent rugby. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Dane, you mentioned sort of, you know, the, the injury problems that, that you've had and that might, may have affected you in the past and Brad spoke about mm. it really well on, on the podcast when, when we spoke to him. Is that a massive thing for players? Because from an outsider looking in, we say, oh, he's injured, he has, you know, has time off, it's going through rehab, but there's a lot more to it than that, isn't there? Yeah, mate, like, like when you're probably going through your injuries and because you're quite isolated, like you're not actually with the team, so when the team's kind of training, you're by yourself or you go in at different times, so it's quite a lonely place. And um, when you go probably through a number of them, yeah. Yeah, you kind of, like, I probably at the start, I probably bottled it up. So I probably wasn't having a yarn. And then, yeah, then you just got to find a way. And I just maybe had a chat to my missus, probably had a chat to Brad. And I felt when I did that, I could just, it was just like a massive weight off my shoulder. And I could felt like I could get through the day and move on and, and set little goals. So, and guys are injured all the time. Like, guys, and it might not be an injury. It might be something that's going on at home. So, um yeah, just the important of the importance of speaking up or finding something that makes you feel better, so you can get on with the day. You're not bottling up all that kind of bad energy and 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 putting you in a probably a bad space. So yeah, it's a uh, it doesn't happen just straight away. You know, I think you learn, and I suppose like like you said, guys, you know, us speaking up will help that because people get in those situations, they can feel like oh, if Brad's doing or Dane's doing it, then maybe I should try it to to help that out. Mm. And just on that, Dave, how important is it to sort of reach out to, you know, your family or your, your partner or, like you say, Brad and your teammate? Because I guess the first step is it's, it's talking about it and from there it does slowly get easier. Yeah, huge, mate. It's, that's the biggest step. And if you can find, you can find the confidence and to do that, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to help you immensely. So, um, yeah, it might take a little while because, you know, obviously, you know, the blokes kind of find it hard to reach out, but... Honestly, like the more we talk about it, the more we make it, you know, real easy to talk about with other guys or people in your family. It's um, it makes a massive difference. So yeah, it's uh, it's very important. Absolutely, absolutely, Dave. Well, it's brilliant to to hear your thoughts on mental health, as obviously, and obviously Brad's involvement with Lou said it has been brilliant as well. But let's talk about your playing days together now, if you don't mind. And obviously, you spent some really fun times and some really good memories at um at the Hurricane. To me, and first of all, Brad, what was it like to to play alongside Dave? Ooh. Take it easy, bro. <laughs> throw, throw you straight into the deep end there, Brad. 
What was that? I, I missed it. I must have cut out or something. Was it a joke? <laughs> um, actually take it easy. <laughs> oh, take it easy. Um, no, look, I guess um, um, for me, without you know getting too cheesy, Dane sort of took me under his wing when um, when I sort of came onto the professional rugby scene, even even as early as Wellington. So, um, I, I you know I think I think everyone will probably back me up on this. Dane sort of one of those players that leads by example and leads by actions first and he's very passionate about uh, the game and he's obviously not afraid to say um, what's on his mind and um, first things first he's going to play well and, and the team is obviously first and foremost for him so I think that's what um, I guess as a as a player you want to sort of be surrounded by people like that and that's what I sort of that's the vibe I got you know playing with Dane no matter um, you know no matter what game it was or no matter what training session it was it was always there's always a purpose behind it. There's always a passion behind it, and um, I think it was it definitely rubbed off on the team. And you could see over the the time uh, when I joined in, anyway, obviously Dane's been there a few years before I was, but you know, you could see it building into that culture where it was all about the team. And I, and I think that definitely starts with, like you say, figurehead who um, who drives that. And I think Dane's definitely one of them. So enjoyable to play with as well because he he always brings a little bit of niggle on the field. Um, <laughs> not just that training, but also in the games as well. So he's sort of, oh, God, I got your back, mate. I'll come in and help you out again. But <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's really good. And then playing with Brad, and he, he, he said that, that, you know, you took him under, under your wing, if you like. But uh, what was it like to, to play with Brad and see Brad developing as a player when, when he was at Hurricanes? Yeah, mate, he was a special player. Like the, probably the first thing I probably recognised with him, and just had a great work ethic. Um, was like really keen to learn. Um, yeah, so yeah, we spent. I can't even remember the first year. Lions was maybe 2011. So we spent a, you know a good seven eight years together and, and formed a pretty good relationship. But yeah, love love playing with Shieldsy. Um, you know, always would give it everything on the field and and just a good bloke. Like we had some good times outside of rugby, um, which was which was awesome. And, had a bit of fun, but yeah, really, really talented player and just yeah, loved his work rate and work ethic. And he cared a lot about the, the Hurricanes when he was there and, and played it. Like that's the way he played, just um, played for the swell and, and, and did his work. Uh, you, you mentioned sort of the good times you had there, Dane, and I think Dolan Barrett has spoken <laughs> in the past about sort of the camaraderie you had as a, as, as a group of teammates. I mean, how strong was that bond? And you, it's quite clearly just from the smile on your face that you had a good time. Yeah, <laughs> probably won't go down to too much depth. No, we had, we, had, we had a good crew. Like, um, yeah, before Chelsea left, there was a good bunch of us that had been in the, like, probably the young fellas, like middle, you know, mid age, that had kind of come through. So we had a really good environment, really good work ethic. But yeah, like, yeah, yeah. a lot of the times I would probably remember, probably off the field, um, you know, <laughs> a few, the parties and like the, the team functions and stuff like that. Brad's pretty out there. I'm um, always that crazy guy. That's <laughs> 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 some crazy stuff. Did you tell me about you and Bodie at all? <laughs> but uh, yeah, just, we had some just good memories, mate. Um, yeah, really, really good times with with, with Shields and some few of the boys. Not gonna, not gonna comment on that, Brad. <laughs> <laughs> no, not no. Nah. Like you said, it's a good time. <laughs> no, I think. Well, I think I was like one thing. Obviously, we like. Quite, I said before we left, quite similar similar people. Like uh, obviously, our, our wives get on um, really well, and um, you know, sort of sort of have the same sort of morals and ethics. And I think that transferred, like you say, on the field, but off the field, but also, you know, when you want to let your hair down and, and have a good time, all those sort of things, sort of they all marry up, which was which was quite cool. You, you, some, you sometimes quite hard to find people that um, that you get on with it with a special level like that, and you and it's probably only you probably only got, I suppose. You know, you can count them on both hands of, of those sort of people in your life. So it's, it's pretty cool fun. And does it just show that team bond as well, Brad, that, you you know, you're still very close with Dane? And, and as Dane says, you know, you had such a good relationship with the guys. So does that just show how, how well you all got on as a team, that you've still been able to keep in touch with Dane the way you have? Yeah, I think um, it definitely, I think it definitely took a lot of work um, from, from, from when I first came in anyway. They were obviously had like a, um, I think I mentioned it last time I was on here. We we obviously had a, a long term goal, and 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 the players understood what their role was in building that that culture, that winning culture, and 
and all that sort of stuff. So I think it did take a bit of time, but you know, once it's there and you've you've had the same group of guys or the same core group of guys, um, you know, spitting out the same sort of um, you know standard and expectation and you know how to enjoy the joy the side of rugby because that's a massive part of it as well. It's enjoying what you're doing and being passionate about it because if you're not having fun along the way, then um, you know it's pretty hard to get up and, and do what you do each day. So I think that's the biggest thing is. You know, obviously winning helps, um, but if you love what you're doing and you love the guys around you and um, everyone's got a you know common purpose and a, and a common goal, then it makes it much easier and you obviously gel a little bit easier. And one of the, you know, very successful times you had, Dane, um, playing together was um, winning the Super Rugby in 2016 and obviously you, you captained that side and Brad mentioned it last time on the podcast of how special that moment was for you guys. I mean, I think if I'm right in saying, Dane, it was your first Super Rugby title for the Hurricanes. So mm-hmm. how important was that for the team? But how much did you enjoy that success? Because it seemed like it had been building for quite a few years. Yeah, mate, it was probably one of my favourite years of rugby, to be fair. Like, especially the year before, because we, we got right to the final and we uh, lost to the Landers. And we then we had a lot of like senior guys leave. We had Conrad Smith, Martin Honor, Ben Franks, Jeremy Thrasher. We lost a lot of experience. So yeah, sixteen was awesome. We just I don't know, just every game that we played, we just seemed to get more confidence with each other, more trust. And I think we must have played the Waratahs and they had pretty much had like an Aussie forward pack, you know, they were huge and we got lost a few scrums and but we seen our attitude was we were always coming back like we didn't care what happened. We were like there was no way we were gonna lose the lose the game, we managed to win. And then from that, I reckon from that point, we kind of, yeah, it just became like a habit of winning. And we had a massive desire to, to, to play for each other. And then, yeah, it was, things just clicked. And then the next thing we're in a final at a home stadium, we managed to you get, get to lines. But yeah, like me and Brad, we grew up watching the Hurricanes. Like I used to go to the games, I was a young fella. So to to get the first championship for, for a franchise that we care a lot about was, was pretty special, mate. It was a, a great night and a, a great uh, few days just team bonding with the boys. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty special. You didn't, you didn't tell him that he played with his broken ribs as well, which was, um, which was quite special. They seemed to disappear that after the game, though, once he left his um, and you mentioned kind of growing up and watching the Hurricanes there, Dane, and you obviously captain the side. And I was reading the other day, I think there was an article that was looking back on that, that team and it was uh, four, four years to the day that you'd, you lifted the trophy. And you, it mentioned that you were captain of the year that year. So that must have been a bit of an icing on the cake for you at the end of the season. Yeah, mate. Like, yeah. Like, you only got the C next to you now. Like, there was a lot of guys like Brad himself that we kind of, you don't, you don't just do it by yourself. We had a, like, it was probably me, Bodie, TJ, Victor. We had some real good leaders in that pack that had been there for a while. And yeah, we had some, like, we didn't have a, like, a lot of experience, probably. We had a lot of guys that just came on that year. Michael Fetialofa, Vifa Fida, Willis, like, guys like that who no one really heard of, but then they ended up being superstars. The Tom and Bear, and um, some real good characters that just kind of, we were just all gelled, mate. And it was, yeah, I was lucky enough to, um, you know, put up the trophy at the end of the game, but it was a massive, you know, team effort, not just from the players, but the management as well. It was, yeah, a special day, one I'll probably never forget. And, and Brad mentioned you, you, you had a bit of damage to your ribs there, Dane. Was there absolutely no way you were going to miss that game? <laughs> yeah, mate, I, to be fair, like, even the, like, I, I, yeah, I was still 50 50 probably on the Friday night. We had to go do like a publicity thing with the trophy and even the morning I was like yeah mm-hmm. still unsure but yeah got a jab and just took the pain away and I was away laughing but yeah it was yeah there's probably no way I was going to miss that game but yeah it was it was worth it definitely worth it and you know from from that success of the Hurricanes obviously combined with that is is your international career and um, game but before we sort of go into your All Blacks time obviously you must have played against Brad a couple of years ago when he was playing for England uh, at Twickenham and you were representing New Zealand. I mean, what was that experience like? Because, you know, two years previous, you'd uh, been lifting the, the Super Rugby Cup together. Yeah, it was it was real weird. Um, I think we I caught him on the... Because we were going to catch up during the week, but we just, you know, it's like it's pretty busy during Test Week. I think I rang, we rang each other on Thursday, had a yarn. It was still quite... I was trying to crack jokes. He was real serious. I like, wouldn't give me anything. 
And then um, <laughs> when he faced off in the haka, I was like, I was just in my head, I was, I'm just going to look for Brad and look at him. And we just stared at each other the whole whole haka and then, yeah, managed to get on the second half. And we managed to say something at Iraq. We had a bit of a laugh together. But, yeah, it was cool, mate. It was like we were stoked for Brad that he, you know, chose that path and to play international footy was awesome. And we managed, we swapped jerseys after the game. So, you know, that was pretty special as well. So, um, yeah, it was cool. Real good buzz playing against a mate that's worked his ass off to get where he is. And Brad, I mean, you, you spoke about it on the last podcast about coming up against New Zealand. But when you, you were kind of meeting up with Dane before the game, was it very undercover? Because I can imagine with the world of social media, if someone had taken a photo, it could have gone, could have gone viral. <laughs> Well, we did, yeah, we didn't actually get to meet up in the end. It was um, we try we tried, but the training week just didn't quite um, yeah, days off were a little bit different. And but I can imagine, yeah, I can imagine if um, if somebody saw us in Teddington or wherever they were staying, <laughs> sitting us together in a coffee, it might look a bit funny. But um, no, nah, we I would have been great to catch up. And but I guess like what Dan said, it's such a busy time of year for you know touring team and. Everyone's so fixated on on what's coming up at the weekend, especially like for me that was that was probably the one of the biggest games you know minus the final for the hurricane probably one of the biggest games mentally um for me and um yeah it was, it was actually it was quite strange because it sort of felt like a super rugby game I guess for me because it was all the guys that I've been playing against you know week in and week out for the last sort of six or seven years so um, I try not to make any contact with anyone down the tunnel. <laughs> um, because I knew I probably would have <laughs> the cricket smile or something like that at some stage. But yeah, I do remember the rock that um, caused me to push my face into the mud. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good time. Good time. And uh, just sort of onto your New Zealand uh, career day, and obviously it's been such a, a wonderful international career for you, and obviously poss- probably there. The highlight is the, the 2015 World Cup, but just for, you know, mere mortals like myself and, and, the, and people possibly listening to this, I mean, what is it like to represent the All Blacks? Because, you know, we've seen the documentaries, etc., and it just seems such a special, special thing to be a part of. Yeah, mate, like, yeah, it's probably hard to put it in the right words, but like every Kiwi kid, they want to be play for the All Blacks and to, just to get to their dream is, yeah, it's... Um, words probably can't describe it, but yeah, everything you've ever done in your rugby career, all those trainings, academy trainings, all those 6 a.m. starts, all those missed functions, because you can't, you know, you're putting everything into your rugby to put on that jersey and do the haka and the anthem for the first time. It's just, no, it's, yeah, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime feeling. And, and to be a part of it for a little while was, was pretty special. So, yeah, definitely um, ticked off my childhood, you know, goal and, yeah, something I'll cherish for the rest of my life because it's uh, you know, not many guys get to do it, so it's been a one hell of a ride. Yeah, I think that's prob- probably just, just, go on. Go on. Um, I finished watching the um, all or nothing series that focuses on the All Blacks on Amazon the other day. I've finally got around to doing it now, I've got a bit more time on my hands. Um, I noticed that Steve Hansen is, is very brutal in those training sessions. Um, you know, every, every coach might be like that, we just don't see the coverage of it. Uh, but when he speaks to TJ after the Lions test, he seems to come across very brutal. Um, what What is he like? And, and does that obsessive nature make him the best? Yeah, like he's brutal, mate, but he's probably honest. Like I think that's probably the biggest thing. Like he's not saying it to get under your skin or to put you down. He just wants you to be the best. And the way it comes across might be a bit, you know, raw. You know, if that's pro- so it probably takes a little while to put, to probably get used to like I think if you're a young fella you'd be like this guy doesn't like me but he's just trying to get the best out of you and um you know that was just the way he did things and he was actually yeah once you kind of take the cameras away and hit it he was actually a good oh he's a good man like he'd come ask you about your family um stuff like that so uh yeah but I think you know winning and performing was a massive part of the way he coached and he wanted the All Blacks to succeed and that was a massive a massive part of his drive to do that and that's the way he did things was with his raw honesty and trying to make players better. And Dane, you've been you've been you said there that you've it's been one hell of a ride and I think that's probably a little bit of an understanding because you've been part of this New Zealand side that has been so so dominant over sort of 
the last eight to ten years, if you like. I mean, what what has that been like? And obviously, with the winning the World Cup in twenty fifteen, must have been must have been the real high point in that. Yeah, it's been good, mate. Well, not good. It's been pretty awesome to be fair. Like we've had a few, um, like it hasn't been like gone all the way. Like we've had a few, you know, losing to Ireland, losing to England in semi finals. We've had a few, you know, low points, but that's just footy. But yeah, oh, it's just been special, mate. Um, like some really good people in those teams, good, good management, and yeah, it's just going out and playing footy. To be fair, and doing it in an all black jersey is just extra special. You know, it's. It's a massive part of New Zealand, massive part of all that rugby, and yeah, it's um, it's, it's hard to put into words, but yeah, I just think I've, I'm real lucky, mate, that I've been able to do it for 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 that amount of time, and yeah, it's just it's the people, the games, the crowds, the fans, the trips. It's yeah, it's been awesome, mate. It's been really cool. And when you won the World Cup in 2015, Dana, I can imagine there's there's a moment where you, you you just compose yourself in the dressing room. You've got the gold medal around your neck and the celebrations are going on. But you probably look round and you've played with these unbelievable players. That, you know mm. what was that? What was that feeling like when you look round at those guys and you think, wow, I've played. You know, I played with these amazing players and I've been a very special part of that. Yeah, mate. Like there was a. Oh, like, we didn't really talk about it during the like the World Cup, but there was a massive part of probably my. Um, you know, motivation was to send out guys like, you know, Richie, Dan, you know, all those, Ma, Conrad. There's so many legends of not just all black rugby, but world rugby. And to they, those guys deserved, you know, mm-hmm. to go out the way they did. So, yeah, it was cool, mate. Um, yeah, looking around and having a few beers with, you know, Richie and Ma and Conrad was was extra special. And, you know, it was, it was a good way to send out uh, some legends of the game. And, yeah, it was, it was a good few days. <laughs> and made may slightly sweeter by beating Australia in the final at Twickenham. <laughs> yeah, always uh, extra special beating the Aussies. So no, it was good. Good. Yeah, it was a good game. And, and just on Australia <laughs> Day, I've got to mention a try. I think it was the same year, maybe in 2015, that you scored against Australia. And we were having a bit of a chat yesterday, and we, we came to the conclusion that we do think you're probably the quickest hooker in world rugby. <laughs> I don't know if Brad can testify that. <laughs> that's, that's why I put him in my uh, my 15 because he can play anywhere <laughs> <laughs> used to <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah, no, yeah mate I was pretty lucky Dizzy did all the work I just kind of ran and thought I had no gas but I remember after that trial I was gas for like the whole game like that speed endurance <laughs> was not made for hookers I think that was the last action I probably did but yeah, it was it was cool, mate, because it was the I think we lost to Aussie the week before, and that, mm. that game was like the side in the bladder zone and last game for a lot of those legends in New Zealand. So yeah, it was a good way to, to send them out, and yeah, it's always nice to get a meat pie. Well, we're hoping to see a couple of meat pies, Dane, from you uh, when Super Rugby returns <laughs> uh, in, in a in a week and a half time. But I think there's quite a lot of people from the UK who'll be so so interested in what's going on in New Zealand because we've been without rugby for, for quite a while, and I think. Both mm. yourself and Brad are probably very much the two people that we can speak to about sort of what Super Rugby can offer. And and staying for people who may not know too much about Super Rugby, what, what can we expect from the next 10 weeks and the added incentive of it being New Zealand derbies every week? Yeah, mate, she's going to be pretty um, pretty physical, I reckon. Um, New Zealand derby is always pretty tough. Um, I think it's because yeah, there's a few, I don't know if you guys, there's like a golden point now. They've brought yeah. a golden point rule. The, uh, the red card, which might be good for the Hurricanes, because we've, been, <laughs> we've had a couple of red cards this year that can be replaced after 20 minutes. So, um, be good, mate. I reckon it's going to be a lot running rugby. Guys will just want to have a go. Obviously, the game's been taken away uh, taken away from us for a bit. So, I reckon, um, yeah, boys will be pretty energetic and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's going to be a great spectacle, I think. Um, and I think the crowds, I think they might be back as well for the first game. I think. Uh, they've announced, so that's going to be, um, yeah, New Zealand. You can imagine New Zealand rugby fans will <laughs> definitely make a day of it. Three o'clock games, so yeah, <laughs> most everyone will be coming <laughs> by about seven o'clock. But yeah, it'll be good, mate. It's going to be um, real entertaining footy and, and, and pretty brutal as well. This question is probably going to be for Brad now, Dane, because I, I can imagine your answer will be the Canes. But Brad, in terms of sort of the teams that, to watch out for, I guess all five of them have their qualities, but what should be what should we be looking out for from from these New Zealand franchises? I don't know. I, I guess um, 
I mean, obviously, obviously, yeah, deep down, you always want the the Canes to do really well and and be super comp- competitive. Um, I hate to say it because um, it's obviously one of the biggest rivalries we've had, but I guess the Crusaders are probably um, are going to be a pretty strong team again. And I'm actually interested to see who uh, how Bodie goes up at the Blues and uh, <laughs> <laughs> what the story is going to be up there. So um, he's obviously not going to get tired if he can run a four twelve Bronco. So. Yeah, boys might have a bit of a handful over there, but yeah, mate, it's going to be it's going to be unreal. And, and like you say, every sort of player um, fan of rugby around the world is going to be tuning in because it's it's basically the only rugby that's going to be played. Um, so I'm looking forward to it as well, and um, and looking forward to seeing the ball get chucked around again. Yeah, and, and I can presume, Brad, you will be cheering on cheering on the Hurricanes at a, a stupid time in the morning for us over in the UK, but. For, for maybe fans who have different allegiances to premiership clubs, is there any similarities from premiership clubs to super rugby clubs that they might be able to say, oh, I'll, I'll support them because of a certain reason or is it just a completely different landscape? Um, yeah, I guess, um, I don't know. The first thing that comes to mind, I suppose, would like, for example, for like Wasps and Hurricanes is, is that attacking sort of, um, you know, out of nowhere sort of rugby that, that counter-attacks with rugby broken play sort of stuff. Um, I think you're going to expect a lot of that, especially early on, like, you know, when you come back from pre-season, generally in a season anyway, um, early on, you know, boys are still trying to find their feet. So the, there's a few mistakes or the, the whatever it might be. So there's, a, there's an opportunity to sort of play from, from nothing, really. Um, I guess if you look at Saracens, the way that they play, over here, they're quite quite a structured team, and they they tend to play the same way um, most weeks, um, and they seem to get good results. And I suppose the Crusaders, in a sense, are like that as well. They tend to sort of stick to their structures pretty, you know, pretty religiously. So um, yeah, I don't know. I guess um, I guess people can make up their minds, but I mean, there's only five teams to choose from. Not uh, there's bloody twelve teams over here in the Premiership, so um, you can make up your mind depending on what you want. And, and Damon mentioned there sort of the, the New Zealand derby factor and we know how sort of ferocious that those games are. So to have them, you know, every every week other than, you know, the weeks where you do you do get the breaks must be really exciting for you as players. And obviously, as you mentioned, if the fans are allowed to come back into the stadiums, it's going to be quite the atmosphere as well. Yeah, it's going to be good, mate. Like any rugby is going to be good, but to make, yeah, it's probably going to be extra special because there's so much competitiveness before the New Zealand derbies. Probably the depth of squads will be quite crucial because obviously the, like the, those derbies probably take their toll. So I think the rotations, probably everyone's going to get a run, which will be awesome for each franchise to to give the guys that probably might not get a run as well. So yeah, it's going to be good, mate. Um, yeah, we, we really can't wait, especially with the Blues first up, playing against the old mate. So it'll be, uh, it'll be pretty cool. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the, the other week, uh, Dane, that you got asked uh, a question in the press conference about coming up against Bowden, and then Bowden himself has said he doesn't want to see you at the at rook time. Um, <laughs> and I think Brad, Brad can uh, um, sympathise with that as well. So, uh, are you really looking forward to, to coming up, again, especially with it being his debut? Yeah, Bears does. We probably hasn't hit a ruck in his whole career. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, he's pretty. He's, a, he's one of the best players. He, he, he's quite quick. Probably too quick for me, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, hopefully, gets um, we come into each other and, and have a bit of a have a go. But yeah, no, it'll be good, mate. Like we spent a lot of time with Bears, and um, it's good to see him. He's finally good to put on that Blues jersey, and yeah, he'll probably make it extra special. He's playing against his mates, so yeah, it's it's going to be good. And and just from a personal point of view, Dana, how excited are you for to get back playing? I know we touched on it at the, at the, at the top of the podcast about your excitement, but we've we've seen pictures this week of it getting a bit colder over in New Zealand and you've been having to put the hard yards on, hard yards in on training. But I guess you, you wouldn't swap that for, for not playing rugby. Nah, mate. Um, not keen on the level four lockdown, that's for sure. So, yeah, we trained, I think, last Friday was like a typical Wellington day, hissing southerly and rain and all the boys had smile on their faces and a bit of contact. So, yeah, nah, mate, we'll take anything at the moment. So, there's a real good buzz around the place and, yeah, there's a lot, like I said, there's a lot of excitement around the lads and, we're all keen to get stuck in and play some footy. I think, that, I think that's the thing uh, like over this side of the world as well is that you, you kind of get into a, a mindset where you might you might take it for granted a little bit what you do and I suppose having this time off you kind of realise that 
man, you actually you really miss what you love and you really you're really passionate about what you do you do and it doesn't matter what it looks like, you just want to get stuck in and I think people are gonna realise once you're there like we've got to make the most of it every time we turn up because you never know when you you know, you might not make it the next season or you might be playing for a long period of time. So I think that's massive. Yeah, ab- absolutely, absolutely, Brad. And I mean, just one thing that I want to ask as well, Dane, is, you know, New Zealand is leading the way in terms of uh, bringing rugby back. And I know Australia, they're hopeful of doing sort of something similar uh, in the next few weeks or so. But do you think this could be sort of the future for Super Rugby going forward? Because there is a lot of travel involved for you guys, you know, travelling mm. to South Africa and Argentina and obviously Japan in recent years. But could this be the way forward, do you think? Or is it, you know, too soon to say at the moment? <laughs> Yeah, it's tough, mate, because well, there's, there's a lot of uncertainty around Super Rugby. But I think, like, personally, I think we need Africa and Aussie. I don't think we can do it alone. Like, it makes playing, like, the travel, like Shieldsy can tell you, but it makes it extra special, like, because we're playing some of the best players in the world. So that's obviously going to make New Zealand rugby strong as well. I think if we do it alone, we might just put ourselves in a bubble and it might not help our game. That's where I'd, yeah. And there's been a lot of chat, like Africa might be going up to you lads, or we might have an Australasia competition. So yeah, it's, we're not too sure who to believe at the moment. But I know there's a lot of work behind the scenes to, to put the work in to hopefully get a super comp and get Africa and Aussie back on board and make it a, like a round robin, which is was, what was the plan for next year. But I think, yeah, personally, I reckon we need to, to keep Africa and Aussie in it and, um, yeah, just... And make it make it that because I think it'll make the game stronger and make us make New Zealand rugby, Australian rugby, and African rugby pretty strong as well. And you know, trips are the ones that bond bond the boys as well, isn't it? You get to Australia yeah. for a couple of weeks, pop over the pier yeah, yeah, for so another week or whatever it used to be. Yeah, those good old trips. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stories I think you're not telling us here. No, yeah. My wife's in the in the lounge, so we'll have to save those ones. <laughs> <laughs> and, and just finally, for, for me, Dane, in terms of rugby coming back in New Zealand, you know, it seems like over there that the Prime Minister has been so strong about how everyone's easing the way out of lockdown. And I guess rugby, like I said before, is such a massive part of society over there. So was rugby quite seen as one of the top, ag- top agendas to come back as quickly as possible? Or has it just been a, a natural progression, do you think? Um, I think, yeah, like, rugby is pretty important to New Zealanders and, and um, you know, especially the All Blacks and stuff like that. So, yeah, but I think when this went, when this happened, you could see that rugby, like, sport wasn't the most important thing. It was about people's lives and welfare and, and like we talked about, mental health as well. So, and I think, yeah, like I said, it's been just a progression of how well New Zealanders kind of just stuck into that level four and really done their part so we could, you know, get our rugby back and get our jobs going and stuff like that, getting our economy going back again as well. So, yeah, it's a combination of things, mate. And, um, yeah, I thought, oh, we've probably got to thank everyone in New Zealand for doing their part because if we didn't, we would have we would have been playing rugby and there was probably times that we thought during that um, that we probably wouldn't get rugby, rugby back on the field. So, uh, yeah, we're very, I suppose, honoured and privileged that we get to do that because of what New Zealand's done and the way that we've responded. Absolutely. Absolutely, Dane. Very, very well said. Um, uh, now, normally we end our podcast, as Brad will know, with um, doing a, a, a 15 to take, to take to Mars. Brad's was one of the best, I have to say. It went down quite, quite the storm on social media. But uh, Mark normally leads this part of the podcast. So, Mark, over to you. Just before we get into that, the, um, just listening to, to Dane and, and, and Shieldsy just bounce off each other and talk about playing rugby over the years like we've all done and you know, they just played it on a massively big scale and we played at Wimslow Rugby Club. <laughs> but our patron um, is Sean Edwards, who a million years ago I played rugby with. And, and when you've worn the same colours as, as somebody, it, it sort of matters. But we're just picking the threads up of something Sean said to me when we were chatting about, you know, what makes a great player. And clearly we've got two absolute greats of the game here. And he said, well, you've got a choice in life and you, you can choose your attitude. And it, and it strikes me that Dane and, and Shieldsy, they're, they're, they're not only durable um, and focused and disciplined and the things you'd expect, but they're deeply humble. 
And that to me is just a massive quality in, in a human being. Forget a rugby player, but you know, it's, it's just, uh, you know, the, the all black legend just grows bigger and bigger to me. Um, and I'd be really fascinated in just lobbing this question at both of you. So, so the premise is that the Martians have landed and they want to take on Earth in a game of rugby to decide the future of civilization. The winners keep, <laughs> the winners keep, both, keep both planets. The losers, God knows, get sent to Pluto. So we're going to go on a shuttle. The shuttle takes four weeks to get to Mars. And your job is simply to select the best 15 to win that game. But they've got to be, I think, for you two particularly, they've got to be players that, they're not just great players. They've got to be, they've got to be able to get on with each other. They've got to be great tourists. So the stories that you haven't told us, which one day you may tell us, <laughs> need, need, to, need to be the hallmark of those players. And then on top of that 15, there's a, there's a manager, a coach, a water boy, and a, and a kit man. So over to you. Yep. I've, done, I've picked players that I haven't played with because some guys will get quite touchy and quite sensitive, I reckon, especially for <laughs> But <there's>, I, I reckon... <laughs> But I, when I look at the, some of the players, I reckon these guys will be good men and humble men, work hard, and, and yeah, you can have a bit of a laugh. So number one, I've got Oz Durant, uh, the African yeah. prop, played in like three World Cups, beast of a man. Uh, number two, I've gone Keith Wood, yeah. Irish hooker, one of the greats. He was a massive um, inspiration for me. Nearly Number as three, quick, nearly, just, nearly, nearly as quick as you. Though. <laughs> <laughs> he could kick better than me, though. Should he? He's some good kicks on him. <laughs> um, number three, Adam Jones from yeah. Wales. I just love the look of the man. <laughs> he's, he's, um, <laughs> he just looks like a good, a good bugger. Uh, number four, you guys will probably know Martin Johnson. Yeah, he looks like a good man, good tough man on the field, and, and enjoy a few beers off it. Um, number five, Bucky's Bortha, African yeah. prop. Pretty, yeah, pretty tough on the field. Uh, number six, <laughs> I've gone Jerry Collins. Yeah. Um, yeah, just a uh, All Black legend, uh, great Hurricanes legend as well. Uh, number seven, George Smith. Um, break turnover king. Number eight, uh, Zinzan Brook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If we need a drop goal, he's our man. Um, <laughs> number number nine, George Gregan. Even though I probably hate him. <laughs> Not hate him, but he he's, he's, he was a tough competitor. But yeah, he looked like he was a just the way he played was a great man. Uh, number ten, Johnny Wilkinson, um, yeah. le legend of the game. Number eleven, Jonah Lomu. Yeah. Uh, number twelve, Brian Lee Ma, crunch tackle man. Yeah, the car effect, uh, right? yeah, car, yeah. It's uh, thirteen, Frank Bunce. Played for the All Blacks. Yeah, massive inspiration. I've gone fourteen. Because he probably hangs out on the wing like I do, uh, Sean Fitzpatrick. Because I felt sting that I didn't put him in hooker, so I thought I... <laughs> he, used to, he loved the few pies on the on the wing, so I had to chuck him in there. And uh, number fifteen, a guy that probably grew up down the road from me, Christian Cullen. Oh yeah, just um, yeah, legend of the game. So I've tried to put all you know the teams in there, not just um, all black fans. And yeah, I'm a massive fan of the game, so there was some. Guys, that were massive inspiration for me and I love to watch when I was growing up. Uh, I've got a little, I'm a little bit biased here with the coaches and that. Brad could probably back me up. But coach, I've gone Chris Boyd. He's yeah. a great, one, yeah, great coach. Really good man. Um, loves a gin and tonic. Uh, kit man. <laughs> well, one of uh, Brad's good mates who's actually works for, he owns his, uh, he runs a, a clothing company. I think it's Kukri, uh, Reggie Goods. <laughs> he'll, be able to sort out, he'll, be, he'll be able to sort out a kit for us, no problem. Uh, Waterboy, uh, Jeremy Thrush. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. I think he loves that movie, The Waterboy. So he might let him say in the movie. So I reckon he'd be like him. And uh, manager uh, with one of the greats, uh, Conrad Smith. Yeah. I reckon, um, 
he had a yeah. few social events planned for us. But yeah, that's my team, lads. It's, it's bloody tough <laughs> to pick. For, for, for fear of for fear of committing national heresy, um, who would you select as captain? Because um, obviously you've got in there ninety-two cap, um, all black mm, legend, don't you? Yeah. And you've got and you've got yeah. Mister Johnson. I'd probably go Keith Wood. Keith Wood, captain. Yeah. And I'd be I'd be a four. It wouldn't be a bad. <laughs> Keith, or Martin Martin Johnson. Like he won a yeah World Cup, so there's a bit of experience there. But yeah, probably Keith Wood. I'll go. I'll go captain. Keith Wood. Brilliant. Absolutely Thr- brilliant. Thrushy the water police is it? <laughs> <laughs> He'd have an H2 ready to go straight away. <laughs> oh, that's good. I like that. I was going to say, Brad, you seem to enjoy that team. So, no arguments with that selection from Dave? No, it's good. It's a good, um, no, it's a good wee mix there. Obviously, there's probably a couple of players like the Reggie really Goods who um, you guys may not have heard too much about. It's obviously a really close mate of ours. Um, but I grew up all my rugby together and he was with the Hurricanes. He had to retire early, um, unfortunately, due to a concussion. So, um, quite sad, but he, he's obviously moved on to bigger and better things. And, um, and yeah, he's, a, he's one hell of a bloke. And um, <laughs> I definitely think there's always room for him. I feel bad not putting him in my side. Not my starting yeah. Lucy prop now. <laughs> oh, right. He would have been gutted. <laughs> I did ask him who he thought the best prop was. And he, he told me to put himself in there, but I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, brilliant. Well, Dane, it's been fantastic to have you on the podcast. Thanks very much for giving up your time. And obviously, we wish you all the best with rugby returning. And uh, say hello to Bowden Barrett for us when you meet him at rugby time. <laughs> uh, cheers, lads. <laughs> Keep doing what you guys are doing. And you guys have been awesome about it you know, tackling the mental health issues and making it, you know, so everyone can talk about it and doesn't have to hide. So keep doing, keep doing that and, and take care, lads. And awesome to chat. Thanks very much. Very much. Obviously, Brad, cheers for pulling it all together. Great to see you again. No worries. Thank you, lads, for having us. Appreciate it. Cheers, Dane. Appreciate your help, mate. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Yeah. And see so, you guys. And so, uh, Rob, Mark and Dave, thanks very much for for their time as always. Dave, just to finish off with a bit of uh, admin for Loose Heads. Yeah, just get yourselves over to looseheads.co.uk uh, if you fancy getting yourselves some stash, enter code POD at checkout for 10% off. I got my stash on, uh, I think it was Monday, and it's uh, I managed to take a picture with it and then managed to spill stuff all over it, which is why I'm not wearing <laughs> it on this podcast. So it's an absolute shambles two days in. That I've not been able to wear it, but it will return at some point. So uh, many thanks to Mark, Rob and Dave, as well as Brad again. Great to catch up with Brad. Thanks, Brad. That's been another Loose Heads podcast in association with Talking Will Be You. Thanks for listening.